essentially reorienting folks to the reality that the United States is the most powerful country on the planet. And even though the United States is vulnerable, like every other nation on the planet, to terrorist attacks, that those terrorist attacks that have hit our nation, most recently in San Bernardino, are not in any way destabilizing the entire country. I think that's the point that he was trying to make. Did you get the sense that uh, he connected with the average Joe, the average American citizen? Well, you know, I certainly hope so, because if you, again, listen to the campaign trail, you mm -hmm. do feel like everything is beginning to fall apart. And I think it's important that people not lock into that rhetoric. So I, I believe it probably made people sit up and go, well, that's right, of course, we're the strongest country in the world. Very interesting. What about you, Bruce? Uh, um, what about you from your vantage point? You are an Africanist in the uh, Department, in fact, of African Affairs at the State Department. You know, I thought the three references to Africa in the President's speech, uh, though brief, were, were very important. Um, the first one deals with our need to work with partners in Africa to combat the threat of, of, of extremism. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's about our imperative, not just our imperative to protect our citizens, but our imperative to be good citizens on the planet um, and to use uh, the resources we've got when we must. The second one was a reference to Ebola and the work done with African partners and international partners. Uh, that illustrates the importance of a co cooperative, collaborative approach to large problems such as the outbreak of disease. The third reference was to helping African nations feed their families, feed their people. And I think that relates to our fundamental values as Americans. We want to do the right thing. So I thought those three references were quite important. When you make reference to fighting extremism, extremism obviously you're talking about uh, groups such as Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, and uh, Lord's Resistance Army, and you name it. Any particular reason, for example, why he did not name any of the three? Well, again, I think it, it, uh, Congresswoman Bass has talked about the importance of us putting these things into perspective. These are not existential threats to the United States. So. Uh, to some extent, naming them gives them a credibility that, uh, that we'd rather not always do. What about um, some observers, in fact, who have been saying that uh, the reason you have groups such as Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab is because of leadership deficit on the continent? I think the conditions that gave rise to Boko Haram and to Al-Shabaab uh, predate the existence of both of those organizations. They relate to lack of opportunity, they relate to concern about uh, a lack of faith in, in central authority, corruption, uh, lack of education. So ultimately, in my view, uh, the, the, the response to these groups is going to be to help uh, generate more development, more opportunities for people in those parts of Africa. What about you, uh, Karin? Uh, there are people who have been saying, frankly, that uh, when we talk about groups such as Boko Haram, Al Shabaab, and what have you, we are basically dealing with the symptom. Mm -hmm. That's frankly mm -hmm. what needs to be targeted are the conditions on the ground. Well, I, I think that's absolutely correct. And I think the ambassador's reference to the conditions that existed before those groups had even uh, risen is where we need to focus. So I, I think it's, you know, it's the corruption, it's it's weak governments, uh, mm -hmm. it's a lack of social services, education system, uh, et cetera. It's the systemic reasons. And I do think that uh, attention needs to be focused there. Well, now we'll pause for a short break and would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website Twitter. And we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka. And join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOASOTU or SOTU. And we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa, become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you, so please don't go away. The U.S. Constitution requires a yearly State of the Union message, but it doesn't mandate that the president delivers it verbally. President Thomas Jefferson discontinued delivering the address in person to Congress, simply forwarding his comments on paper to the House and Senate. Prior to Jefferson, Presidents George Washington and John Adams read their annual addresses to Congress. 
In 1913, President Woodrow Wilson restarted the tradition of delivering the address in person. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question, keep your comment brief, and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. When we help African countries feed their people and care for the sick, it's the right thing to do, and it prevents the next pandemic from reaching our shores. You know, right now we're on track to end the scourge of HIV AIDS. That's within our grasp. And we have the chance to accomplish the same thing with malaria, something I'll be pushing this Congress to fund this year. That was U.S. President Barack Obama addressing Congress during last night's State of the Union on America's role on helping Africa. Welcome back. This is Straight Talk Africa coming to you live from Washington. Let me come to you again, uh, Karen. Uh, so how do we get to the issues, frankly, of winning the hearts of minds, for example, um, of people who come from countries uh, where there is instability being experienced? Well, I mean, I think it's very important in terms of the president's message. You know, I, I had the honor of being with him when he went to Kenya and um, Ethiopia. And to sit in the hall of the African Union and the speech that he gave uh, it was very inspiring. I know one of the things that he's looking forward to when he's no longer president is traveling back to Africa again. It was a bittersweet evening. I mean, it was very exciting and, and inspirational, but knowing that it was the last time he was going to address com Congress to me was uh, bittersweet. I, I hate to see him go because I believe he is very committed to the vision and the values that he's talked about over these last seven years.